This is a, a rectal, uh, rectal tumor. I'm just trying to get above it here. So if you look at this lesion here, um, I, I think that there's a, there's a certain amount of overuse of EUS for, for rectal cancer. Because if you look at this lesion, uh, which looks pretty much uh, like a, a long, uh, extensive, circumferential lesion, which I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to get through, it's hard to believe this is anything other than a T3. And if you look at their literature now on EUS for rectal cancer, I think that uh, compared to MRI, uh, there's really no advantage of EUS over MRI. And in fact, MRI, in terms of T-staging, is just as good and has the advantage of seeing the mesorectal fascia. So we, we're currently not even recommending EUS for rectal cancer unless there's some sort of node or something that you think that you want to biopsy by EUS. So in this case, I'm not going to force through here because I don't think it's going to change anything. Let me just get my pedals here. Okay. Okay, so why am I capturing? Okay, so you can see clearly that this lesion just wedging in is clearly going through the muscularis. You can't see any muscularis anywhere. Uh, I'm not seeing any nodes here, but I'm kind of uh, limited in how far I can go. Uh, there probably, there's probably a little bit, maybe a little bit of a node back here, but bottom line is this is, this is an extensive T3 lesion, and there's not much else to be seen here. So I'm just going to pull back out. So again, just let's see what's going into anything else. For example, his prostate or his seminal vessels, I believe, are up at the top there. It looks like it's going to be clear of those. So here, just to show you that this is, um, here the muscularis is still intact, at least the back wall. So this is T2 on this part here. But this part is clearly going through over here. This is uh, here, the inside wall, the muscularis. You can see it, but it looks like it's involved. This is all thickened muscularis wall here. So it looks irregular, but it's just inflammatory. So you have to make sure you see tumor going all the way through before you call it T3. And so here's the prostate at the top, and that's going to be OK. And you want to also just take a look at the sphincters on the way down. So I'm just coming down, down, down. There's maybe a little bit of lesion still left here, maybe. Actually, I think probably not. So it's, it's not anywhere really near the sphincters. But it is good to give them an idea how close they are. So if the tumor's there, there's still tumor. Now it's gone, right about here. And I count one, two. It's about two centimeters from the sphincters. And that's it. So I think for me, rectal cancer, um, uh, if it really looks like an obviously large lesion, I don't see the point of doing an EUS, and they're, they're almost invariably at least T3 and often N1 as well. Uh, uh, and they say we're currently recommending using only MRI for rectal cancer staging. However, if on the MRI there's a doubt about T2 versus T3 or some other, you know, a little discordance, or they want a, a confirmatory test, then we'll do the EUS. And we'll also do it if they need, for example, a biopsy of suspected lymph nodes that may change management, and particularly if there's lymph nodes around the iliac vessels, because when those are positive, that's considered M1 disease.